did you ever think that there are so many scriptures and there are so many holy books but how to benefit from them how to improve our lives from them how just by reading them or by listening from them i mean about them from somebody or just by meditating upon them or there are so many people in india especially you can see that they will keep a bhagavad gita in their home and they will just keep it they will keep it in the altar where the murti is there or but they never touch it why so the question is how do we benefit from this divine body of knowledge which is there all right so today we will see the shrimad bhagavatam answering this question for us and that is how we will know how to benefit ourselves all right so stay tuned for knowing the answer of this question and we are going to continue the shrimad bhagavatam the first chapter first canto third verse and today we will hopefully complete the third verse all right so let us recite the shloka once again 1.1.3 all right निगम कल्पतरोगलित फल सुख मुखा अमृत द्रव्य संयुत पिबागवत रसमल मुहूर्हो रसिक भुवि भावुक दैट्स द श्लोक सो विल रीड द ट्रांसलेशन वंस अगेन ओ एक्सपर्ट एंड थॉटफुल मैन रेलिश श्रीमद भागवत द मेच्योर फूट ऑफ फ्रूट ऑफ द डिजायर ट्री ऑफ वेदिक लिटरेचर्स mature fruit of the desire tree of vedic literature wow that means vedic literatures are like desire trees they fulfill you just go and ask that give me this you know you'll get it emanated from the lips of shri sukhdev goswami therefore this fruit has become even more tasteful although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all including liberated souls so it means that shrimad bhagavatam was already great but now it has become even more greater because it has come out from the mouth of sukhdev goswami who is the son of vyasdev who is a self realized soul and this is relishable for all including liberated souls so it doesn't mean that somebody has perfected their life spiritually and they are they have no interest in reading the shrimad bhagavatam it doesn't mean that okay it means for everybody including the liberated souls they will also relish this so as a part of this purport we discussed how to get rid of a boring lifestyle and how to interact with god so these are the videos which you will find above this playlist in this playlist above this video okay so you can go and have a look at it if you have not and in that we saw the 12 rasas out of which five are prominent and seven are secondary by which we can interact with god or we have seen great personalities interacting and in those videos above this i had also given examples for uh many of the rasas from the scriptures okay all right so now let's start therefore all right so let's start from you know one paragraph above it or should we start from there ah Okay let's start from where we left In the Shrimad Bhagavatam the transcendental pastimes of the Lord are narrated and yes i forgot to say if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation from me you could go down to my description section where you will find the link to my website okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him here now <laughs> In the Shrimad Bhagavatam the transcendental pastimes of the Lord are narrated and the narration is systematically depicted by shrila sukhdev goswami thus the subject matter is appealing to all classes of persons including those who seek liberation and those who seek to become one with the supreme whole now let's start in sanskrit the parrot is also known as suka parrot when a ripened fruit is cut by the red beaks of such birds its sweet flavor is enhanced wow the vedic fruit which is mature and ripe in knowledge is spoken through the lips of sukhdev goswami who is compared to the parrot 
not for his ability to recite the Bhagavatam exactly as he heard it from his learned father Vyasdev, but for his ability to present the work in a manner that would appeal to all classes of men. So here the meaning is that there are many times where you know people will be able to quote so many shlokas from the Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam like a parrot, you know, chapat 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 like this. Have you seen parrots? You know, they talk quite fast sometimes. <laughs> but uh, Sukhdev Goswami is not that parrot who just keeps speaking, all right? His ability is that he can present the work in a manner that could appeal to each class of men. So that's his speciality. He doesn't just say he makes things, uh, he presents it in a way that people can understand and apply it in their life. That's what is the meaning of this. The subject matter is so presented through the lips of Sukhdev Goswami that any sincere listener that hears submissively can at once relish transcendental tastes which are distinct from the perverted tastes of the material world. So Srimad Bhagavatam is much, it's like beyond all these material things which we see in this world, okay. The ripened fruit is not dropped all of a sudden from the highest planet of Krishna Loka. Rather, it is... Ah, with that. Rather, it is... Rather, it has come down carefully through the chain of disciplic succession without change or disturbance. Foolish people who are not in the transcendental disciplic succession commit great blunders by trying to understand the highest transcendental rasa known as the rasa dance without following in the footsteps of Srila Sukhdev Goswami who presents this fruit very carefully by the stages of transcendental realization. One should be intelligent enough to know the pos position of Srimad Bhagavatam by considering personalities like Sukhdev Goswami, who deals with the subject so carefully. This process of disciplic succession of the Bhagavat school suggests that in the future also, Srimad Bhagavatam has to be understood from a person who is factually a representative of Srila Sukhdev Goswami. A professional man who makes a business out of reciting the Bhagavatam illegally is certainly not a representative of Srila Sukhdev Goswami. Such a man's business is only to earn his livelihood. Now, there is a symptom mentioned, alright? You will see that symptom here. Therefore, one should refrain from hearing the lectures of such professional men. Such men usually go to the most confidential part of the literature without undergoing the gradual process of understanding this grave subject. Now, I'll come to that. Which is that part? They usually plunge into the subject matter of the rasa dance, which is misunderstood by the foolish class of men. Some of them take this to be immoral, while others try to cover it up by their own stupid interpretations. They have no desire to follow in the footsteps of Srila Sukhdev Goswami. One should conclude, therefore, that the serious student of, of the rasa should receive the message of Bhagavatam in the chain of disciplic succession from Srila Sukhdev Goswami who describes the Bhagavatam from its very beginning and not whimsically to satisfy the mundaner who has very little knowledge in transcendental science. Srimad Bhagavatam is so clearly presented that a sincere and a serious person can at once enjoy the ripened fruit of Vedic knowledge. Simply by drinking the nectarian juice through the mouth of Sukhdev Goswami or his bona fide representative and he rends the purport to the third verse of the first canto of the first chapter. Alright, so the point here is there are many places where if you go you will see people uh, they will recite Srimad Bhagavatam especially in places like India you will see you know that there are Bhagavat Saptas which are going on, okay? Bhagavat Sapta means, Sapta means seven days. And uh, many times people, they will uh, do whatever they want for one full year. 
and then after that just for seven days they will come and sit and the speaker who is speaking for seven days he will also start speaking but he will not speak of all these subjects he will not talk of the soul he will not talk of sufferings that this material world gives he will not talk of the spiritual realm he will directly go to the 10th canto of shrimad bhagavatam why because there he can find the leelas of lord krishna with his gopis headed by shrimati radharani so if a ordinary person reads those uh, chapters from the 10th canto without reading the 9th cantos first all right that's the condition then he or she will think that oh krishna is also another mundane person also he is also enjoying with other women like men in this world enjoy all right so that's a very highly elevated subject the rasa dance ras leela which is there in vrindavan between lord krishna and his gopis that is the highest level of uh, expression of love at a spiritual platform which cannot be imitated now when that gets imitated in the mundane realm it leads to sexual obsession all right so the love which gopis have for krishna is very 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 pure it's beyond any material tinge of expectation all right so there's no comparison of the sexual attraction which people have in this world which is most of the times uh, misunderstood as so called love of this world and uh, people think that oh krishna is also like that so there's a statement in the scriptures you know atmavan manyate jagat so we are like this so they are also like this so allah when a lusty man he reads the story of krishna and the gopis interacting he will think oh krishna is also lusty you know he is also running behind the gopis so he will think like this but here sukhdev goswami is very expert what he is doing is he will present the nine cantos first where there is talk of soul where there is talk of material suffering where there is talk of importance of spirituality where there is talk of krishna and his position so many things as the basis of who lord krishna is okay and then finally when he reaches the 10th canto he will be talking of krishna and some past times which he had with the gopis so by that what happens the uh, the person who is listening the shrimad bhagavatam the hearers they will have a good base to know that krishna is not an ordinary person and shrimad bhagavatam is not ordinary there is no discussion of ordinary uh, some physical affair or physical relation of some man and a woman here all right in the 10th canto whatever is happening there is totally spiritual and beyond human comprehension because unless you are very highly elevated or you are realized at a at that state you will think this is just another mundane interaction all right so sukhdev goswami does not do that but why does he not do that because he is a bona fide representative of the parampara which belongs from from lord krishna to narad muni to vyas dev narad muni um, heard from brahma you know then brahma told Uh, sorry then narad muni told to vyas then vyas dev told to sukhdev goswami so when we hear the spiritual knowledge in the parampara which is you know bona fide authorized legalized <laughs> disciplic succession where the disciple uh, gives the knowledge as it is in principle uh, which he heard from his spiritual master all right then we can understand this otherwise if we are spirit, uh, serious spiritual seekers and if we just go and attend some program given on shrimad bhagavatam by some random speaker they might directly go and jump on the 10th canto and then at the end your conclusion will be yes krishna is uh, apparently you know doing so many things with the gopis so yes so we can also do whatever we want all right so that's the conclusion which you will have unfortunately now this is not to generalize everybody that everybody uh, who uh, has uh, who conducts bhagavat saptas they also do like this this is not a generalized statement but in many places these things go on okay so the thrust of this video is that if uh, if we want to benefit from spiritual knowledge then we have to listen it from the mouth of a bona fide authorized 
representative of Vyasdev. Okay. Otherwise, we will misunderstand and we will not be able to benefit ourselves from these scriptures. And that is why you will see there are many people who do masters or who do PhD on Sanskrit sometimes. They go to big, big colleges like Oxford, Cambridge, MIT, you know, Harvard University, Stanford University, all the best colleges of the world. They have the best PhDs, the best degrees. They are the most expert Sanskrit scholars. But yet they have no inner transformation, yet their own lives are miserable. They are obsessed with things like drinking, uh, indulging with the opposite sex, recklessly, you know, smoking, watching pornography, you know, gambling, all such stuff. Why? Why that after reading so much, they have not been able to benefit uh, themselves? Why? Because they have not heard from a bona fide representative. And when you don't do that, then the knowledge gets uh, manipulated. And then even if the knowledge comes as it is, but always remember it's written here that when Sukhdev Goswami speaks, you know, it's like Sukha Mukha. <laughs> when the parrot tastes, you know, we, he, uh, he pricks the fruit, it becomes even more tastier. So we need to find authorized gurus from authorized paramparas especially from the brahma sampradaya the kumara sampradaya the shri sampradaya the rudra sampradaya prominent four sampradayas in india which uh, are the authorities of vedic wisdom and once we go there from there we can hear all right and then we will be able to benefit ourselves from the scriptures okay and if we just hear it from anybody else, maybe we get some temporary relief mentally, but we will be bereft of the greatest gift of spiritual perfection, which Srimad Bhagavatam offers. Okay, so let us hear it from the right source and benefit ourselves. All right. Thank you very much for your attention. And I hope I could convey my point. And later on, we will go with the next shloka. So let us just read the shloka and the translation and we will end the video okay 1.1.4 so that there is some excitement for the next video all right 1.1.4 naimishe nimisha chetre rasaya sauna kadaya satram swargaya lokaya sahasra samam asataha the translation is once in a holy place in the forest of Naimisharanya, great sages headed by the sage Shaunak assembled to perform a great thousand year sacrifice for the satisfaction of the Lord and his devotees. All right. So we will read the purport the next time when we do the next video. All right. So that's the thrust of this new uh new verse which is there which means now the prelude of the Srimad Bhagavatam the scene that will be described here okay who who said and how this Srimad Bhagavatam started which is also very important all right then if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation from me you could always go down to the description section where you will find the link to my website okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him okay bye bye